Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I um, want to congratulate my colleague, the Honourable Trevor Mallard, for um, moving this amendment. I think it provides a very good opportunity for us to consider. Uh, whether this bill is necessary. This amendment, of course, uh, brings an expiry provision in um, on this legislation and uh, is currently uh, suggested to be the 8th of November 2010. Uh, of course, uh, as others have said, that would be an interesting scenario given the legislation wouldn't actually be effective by then. Uh, and, of course, that would be the best possible outcome from this side of the House's point of view. This legislation is ill thought through. It is unnecessary, and I intend to explain why. Um, so, as a first suggestion, I would urge members opposite to support this legislation and to actually take the time, sorry, the, the amendment, to support this amendment and recognise that this is poor lawmaking. New Zealand is in the situation where many people are now questioning the nature of our democracy and our sovereignty. If Warner Brothers can determine domestic legislation, which Labor legislation is clearly domestic legislation, it is about how we organise our workplaces and how we say that those arrangements will exist and what minimums apply to the people in our industries, if domestic legislation can be impacted on by Warner Brothers, we are indeed in deep trouble. And certainly, uh, yesterday when I was speaking in the House on this matter, I raised a whole number of questions. That was one of them. And I said at that stage that I think now the questions will start to be asked. People will want to know what this government is doing and whether the changes in terms of subsidies, increasing the subsidies available, and also in terms of changing our domestic labour law are necessary. And, um, well, certainly the New Zealand Herald have taken up the challenge. I can put on record that the uh, New Zealand Herald have asked the questions, and they, uh, the heading in their editorial is, price to keep Hobbit in New Zealand is extortionate. Now, they go on to say that, you know, um, they don't have anything against our film industry. None of us do, despite what, opposition uh, what government members are saying. But they go on to say that um, in both instances, this is both in terms of granting extra money and changing our domestic labour laws, <laughs> in both instances, Warner Brothers used fears that the films would be lost to this country to leverage a better deal for itself. There was no question of The Hobbit being shot elsewhere before an industrial boycott lifted before the negotiations began, involving actors wanting to bargain collectively. Warner Brothers simply seized the chance to apply pressure on unrelated issues. In both instances, it should have been resisted. The Prime Minister, however, always seemed relaxed about amending the law to provide clarity in the film sector. Now, this is the bit of legislation we're talking about here. And, in fact, the clarity that this bill is supposedly dealing with is unnecessary. As n many of us have already indicated, including my learned colleague Charles Chevelle, there is no lack of clarity about the status of people working in the film industry. People in the film industry, many of them, work as independent contractors now. There is settled law on this matter. The tests are quite clear. And for you know, well-paid technical people, well-paid actors, it actually suits their interest to be independent contractors. There are also people in the film industry who are less well-paid, who are clearly employees. And the tests have been outlined very clearly, most recently by our Supreme Court in the 2005 Bryson case. So this legislation is unnecessary. And so this is why I am supporting the amendment of the Honourable Trevor Mallard to say, let this legislation expire. If we want to talk about improving the conditions in the film industry, that's a different matter. But this is not clarity that is required. In fact, it isn't even dealing with the matter that the dispute was about. And the matter that the dispute was about was about independent contractors seeking to collectively organise to improve conditions in the film industry. Not to negotiate a collective employment agreement, as some have incorrectly said, but to collectively look at their terms and conditions. And this has been done previously in the Pink Book, and it is about time that it was improved. And international uh, actors' organisations will tell you that the conditions in New Zealand are not up to par. So, you know, there was a legitimate question there. 
Let's let this piece of legislation expire and let us deal with the real issues. Called Sue Moraney. Thank you, Mr. Chair.